Hi everyone and welcome to my guide to using Paradox Game Converters. I will divide this video into multiple sections, the first covering what the game converters are and where you can get them, and the rest of the sections will cover each of the converters and how to use them so you can jump to whichever one you are interested in. Okay, so a Paradox Game Converter is a small application which takes your save game and converts it into a mod which then can be used in a subsequent game such as Imperator into Crusader Kings 3 or Crusader Kings 3 into EU4. Of course you can chain these all together and that allows you to play massive mega campaigns. Okay, so where to get these applications? Head over to github.com forward slash paradox game converters and you'll get this website here. First off I should say that these are not made by Paradox but they are made by actually a small group of talented modders. So consider heading over to their Patreon page to support them. Okay, you can see here a series of links to the different converters. So if I drill down into the Imperator to CK3 one, you can see here there's a release section. If you click on that there, you'll get the latest release notes. And if you scroll down to the assets at the bottom, you'll see the different uh, download options depending on your OS. And if I just drill into the CK3 d 4 again you can see at the sides here, the latest release and all the release notes. So go ahead and download the converter you wish and we will now set it up. Okay, so once you've downloaded the Imperator to CK3 utility, you want to unzip it into a folder like so. And then what we're going to be looking for is the converter front end. And we'll open this here to run. And I advise you run it as an admin just to help prevent any issues. Okay, so you get a pop up sometimes saying that there are some updates available. You just click here on maybe later and I will show you the different options. So up the top here we have the Imperator Rome install directory. You want to populate this. Then we have the Imperator Rome documents directory below it. This is where your save games and mods will be installed. Uh, then you've got the Crusader Kings 3 install directory and the Crusader Kings 3 mod directory. So this is where your mod will be stored. And finally, we have the Imperator Rome save game location. So this is the location of the save game that you're going to convert into a mod. Okay, next step is the this tab here, the CK3 mods. So this just shows you a list of the different mods you have in CK3. There's nothing to do here, so we'll go on to options. And options here, you'll see the options that we have. So we have the option to convert historical heresies. Next, we have the Imperator currency rate. I leave this at the default value. Then we have the Imperator Civilization Worth. Again, I leave this as the default. Then we have how to import legions into CK3. So you've got several options here. I normally leave it at don't. Then we have the mod output name. This is an optional value. You can see here I populated here with the Invictus and extended timeline. And finally, we have the CK3 bookmark date. Again, this is optional, so you can specify a bookmark date if you wish. Okay, now that all the settings are done, we head to the Convert tab and what you should go over here and click on the Convert button and the conversion process will kick off. Now this should only really take a few minutes, so just have a bit of patience and wait until it completes. Okay, that is now complete. So we just need to close down the converter and open up CK3. So launch CK3 and get the launcher menu. And you'll see now that there is a new playset that's been created. This here is a new feature that I've noticed in the most recent update. You can also add it to any playlist by going in and selecting your playlist. Then clicking on the add more mods button, scrolling down, find your mod and select it. Then going back out to the main menu and launching the game with your playlist selected. So now launch the game. Okay, so once the game loads up, Click on new game and you'll be presented with this screen here. It's a blank map. I uh, just be able to mention here a different world and the centuries have passed. So just click on play as any ruler and then you'll be displayed with the country selection screen. And you can basically from here on play the game as normal. So select the country you wish to play as, hit start, the game will load and you can see a message here from the Paradox Game Converters group. And at this point, the game behaves as it would normally. So once you download the CK3 to EU4 converter, 
unzip it to a directory, and then what you're going to be looking for is the converter front end. Open this application. I advise you run it as admin, and you'll be presented with this screen here. This first field is the CK3 documents directory, so this is where your save and mods are all stored. Then you've got the CK3 install directory, the EU4 install directory, and finally the EU4 mod directory, so this is where the mod will be stored. And we've got then the path to the CK3 save. Okay, so once you have your save selected, the next tabs, there's nothing in the mods tab, so we'll skip on to the options. So here you've got a couple of different options you can select. So you've got the start and bookmark. So the default is the standard E4 start date, but you also can have a dynamic start date based off your save. Then you've got the should countries get permaclaims on the Jure land, which empire should inherit the E4 HRE mechanics. See if it options there. Then if you are gonna shatter the HRE, you know, to what level you want to shatter it. And then next we have the option to shatter other empires. And if we're gonna shatter those other empires, then again, how far we wanna go down to duchies or kingdoms, if any. Then we have split large vassals into EU4 vassal states. So that's a simple yes or no. Then we have the option to handle province development. So we can use the CK3 province development or stick to the EU4 vanilla development. Next, we have the clear Siberian quagmire. So you can clear it out, burn it all, or just leave it as it was. Then we have the option to summon the Aztecs. So it's a simple yes or no. And then we have the should institutions and ideas be dynamic. So you've got historic or dynamic. And finally, we have the mod output name if we want to specify a specific name for your mod. Now go to the convert tab and click on the convert save and that will kick off the conversion process okay now that's complete we just shut down the converter and we can load up eu4 so once we have the launcher window open we'll want to go to play sets and select your new mod if it's not in the list obviously go to add more mods and select it from the list once you have it selected go and launch the game with that play set and you are good to go. So once the game launches, just click new game as you would normally, and you'll see the map has changed and you just select your country as you would normally and launch the game. So once the game launches, everything behaves as it normally would in EU4 and you're free to play away at your game. Okay, so you've downloaded the EU4 to Vicky2 converter. So what you do is just extract the contents out into a folder and then what you're gonna be looking for is the converter front end. Run this application, I advise run it as admin. You can see here, I've got a pop-up here about a new update. You can choose to download the update by hitting yes, or you can download it manually if you so wish. Okay, so here we have the different options available. So we have the E4 documents directory, and then we have the E4 install directory, the Victoria 2 install directory, and the Victoria 2 mod directory. Then finally, we have the path to the E4 save game. So select the save game you wish to convert, and then we are good to continue. So on to options. So you've got multiple different options here. I leave most of these at default, like max literacy, dropping the cores of dead nations, turning colonial nations into territories. Then you've got a continuation on from that there, whether to absorb loyal only or disloyal or rebellious. Then you've got, should the population be shaped to E4 advances? We've got a shaping factor here as well. I leave that as default normally, so that there's around the population sizes. Then we also have auto assign national cores. So you have the different options here. You then have the option to make the world Eurocentric. Again, I just leave that at the default value. Then we have the option to wipe out uh, Sub-Saharan Africa. Randomize or geos. Again, leave that at no. Then we've got any religious cultural conversion in E4 and finally we've got make hybrid mod again I leave this at none final option down here is again with the mod output name I you can enter one here if you wish onto the convert tab and then click convert save and wait for the conversion process to complete okay now that's completed we just need to close this down and launch Vicky 2 okay once you have the launcher open You'll want to select your new mod. 
from the options here, like so, and then click on the Start Victory 2 button. So once the game loads, create a new game. You can see here the map reflects the map from the previous game of EU4. Select the nation you wish to play as and click on the play button and the game should load up as normal. From here, just play the game as you would normally. Once you download the Vicky2 to Hearts of Iron 4 converter, extract the files into a folder, then look for the converter front end application and run as admin. So now this will open, again if we're prompted to update, you can do that if you wish. And you have the same set of options, so you've got the Victoria 2 install directory, you've got the Hearts of Iron 4 install directory, you've got the Hearts of Iron 4 mod directory, you've got the path to the Vicky2 save game, and then you've also got the path to the converter. If we then go to the mod tab, you'll see the different Vicky2 mods that I have. Now because I used a mod in Vicky2, you should select that mod in this menu. So you can see I'm selecting the Vicky2 mod that I used. This helps with the conversion process. Okay, so on to options. So we've got a few options here. And shape factor, I leave this at default. Factory factor, again, I leave this at default. Manpower factor and force multiplier. You also have an option here for the different ideologies, whether to keep them all or keep major ones or specify certain ones. And then at the far side, you can see the different options for ideologies that you have. Then there's an option to remove cores if you so wish. You have the option then to create factions, a uh, commander's converted percent, and the EP quick option which you don't use. And once again, you have the mod output file name. And then if we move on to the convert tab, we can hit the convert button to start the conversion process. I've been alerted by my antivirus, so I'll just allow this to continue. So if you get issues, I guess sometimes maybe it's easier just to de temporarily disable your antivirus and this will allow it to continue. Okay, now that it's converted, just close down the converter and launch Hearts of Iron 4. Okay, so now go to play sets and go down and select your mod if it's not there. Go to add more mods and select your mod. Once your mod is selected like so, launch the game. And once the game loads, create a new game. And you can see the different nations from your previous save in Victoria 2. You can also go into other countries here and see all the nations in the world. And you are free to select the nation as you would normally and launch the game. And once the game launches, it just plays as it would any other game. And that's you good to go. If you found this video useful and would like me to make more content like this in the future, let me know in the comments below. If you haven't already, please subscribe. It really helps me out. Also, help support the channel by becoming a member or buying something from my store. Thanks for watching and hope to see you again soon.